the Emperor John VIII sailed out of Constantinople in a last attempt to beg aid from the reluctant West in his struggle with the Turks. After 77 days at sea, the Imperial convoy arrived at the friendly port of Venice. The West had always said that military aid for Constantinople was dependent upon Byzantium's reunion with the Church of Rome. The churches of the East and West, Greek and Latin, had split apart six centuries before. So the Emperor John had sailed with his theologians and his bishops, not his generals or his admirals. In all, some 700 people on the sea, the scholars of Byzantium, Plethon, too, had come especially from Mystra in Greece, as had many of his pupils. The most extraordinary thing about this gathering, that there were bishops and priests from all the cities of the ancient East, all the cities founded by Greece and Rome, the cities of Alexander the Great, the cities of the seven wonders of the world, all had their representatives at the council, all at once. And altogether, it was as if the old world had come to meet the new. But there was plague abroad in northern Italy. Two Byzantine bishops perished in the first weeks of negotiations. The emperor and his retinue rode away from danger, over the mountains and down to the central plain of Italy. Here, perhaps, at Florence, they might forge that union with the West that Byzantium so desperately needed. And here, too, they were memorialized in the frescoes of Bonozzo Gozzoli, painted in the townhouse of the Medici family, the bankers who were sponsoring this council of the churches. That's John VIII, John Paleologus from Mystra, Emperor of Byzantium, come to the West to seek aid. He'd ruled 12 years at this point. And when he got here, the Florentines, those dedicated followers of fashion, thought he was a knockout. They had never seen turbans like that or crowns like that. The jewelers liked it. The, the Florentine weavers liked it, the painters liked it. This was a man whose dress and demeanor influenced fashion here almost for a century. They didn't like him much though. They thought all the Greeks were haughty, sarcastic people who seemed to be laughing at jokes that they wouldn't share with the Florentines. Didn't like them at all, really. What they were experiencing, actually, was a typical Greek thing. It was the full force of the divine right of kings. See, in the West that had rather diminished, the West that had pinched the idea of the emperor had now taken to electing Western emperors. They were confirmed by popes. There was common law, power in the West that seeped down and down and down away from the man who now was like only at the top of a vast pyramid of power. In Byzantium, everything resided in the one man. Now, in the West, and here it is, out for a stroll in the country. Cosimo and the other 700 Medici, all on their horses. This is entirely reversed. I mean, here you've got a man who is a banker, a politician, a multinational businessman, you might say. The West was entirely different. The central disagreement, then, was about these different attitudes to power in East and West about power and precedence amongst the lords of earth and heaven. Most of the Byzantines, though, were insulted at the very idea of arguing about God, whose majesty and dignity was beyond all human understanding. They thought that the clever Roman clerics they faced each day were simply impertinent and immature. After a year of recrimination and debate, 
the Emperor John, still desperate for military aid, simply ordered his delegation to agree to most of the West's arguments. On the 6th of June, 1439, a great act of union was signed in Florence Cathedral, right under the huge, beautiful, brand new dome. An act of union between two churches, between the Pope of Rome and his assembled clergy, the Emperor of Byzantium, and whichever of his Greeks decided to turn up that day. Back at Constantinople, though, the union with Rome caused riots. Italian priests were insulted in the city's churches and Western Europe sent no aid. Disillusioned, disappointed, the Emperor John died a few years later and was buried here in the monastery of Christ Pantocrata, Christ, Lord of Earth and Heaven. And at this same monastery, Gennadius, the theologian, preached that the union with Rome would bring down the wrath of God upon Byzantium. 